Hey guys, Angela here and welcome back to another Hobby Night video. This week, since I have been focusing very much on my Death Guard and particularly my Plague Marines, I thought we should paint one and I'm going to show you how I've been doing it, which is a good, fast batch painting method. So let's go ahead and get started. With our priming complete, we are going to go ahead and pray quickly to the God Emperor of Mankind for the heresy we are about to commit. We're going to take this contrast uh, Militarum green paint and our large shade brush, and we are going to absolutely go to town on this miniature and just make sure that we get this green paint everywhere that we can because it is his armor color and the armor is the majority of the miniature. So we wanna make sure that we can get it into all the little crevices and that everything is covered because especially when you have miniatures pre-built like this, sometimes it can get be hard to get into the portion, say like under the cloak or between the legs or anything like that because you've already assembled it. So this kind of helps assure that we're getting this green everywhere. And then once you've done all that, if you need to, you can go back with a medium shade brush and get some other portions that you want a little bit more control with. So I do this using on the backpack, inside the uh, neck piece on the around the helmet and everything and a few other places. Following that, we're going to take our wraith bone and actually go through and now clean back up all of the various places that we don't want to have the green. That's going to include the trim, any of the bones, any of the like the mouth and his stomach, any of the green we might have gotten on the weapons. We're going to clean all of that up so we have a fresh, clean prime coat to go back over with all the other colors we're going to end up applying to this miniature. The cleanup stage is done and we're going to move on to doing the trim and all the other metal bits with the exception of the weapons. The main reason that I've gone about doing it in this process, and by that I mean putting all of the green on and then doing a cleanup, is because I find that it's a little bit easier for me to do batch painting if I've taken up the majority of the color that I'm going to be using, which was the green, and then just go through and pull out all my details. Actually having the contrast paint on there because of the way that it functions allows me to see some of the details a little bit better than just having the straight primer on it. And so that is why I end up doing this cleanup and then move on to my other color stage. It also means that when I'm doing batch painting, if I do all five Marines in this process, it's I can do all of the final colors all at once and it goes a lot faster for me. So hopefully this will be a technique that you can utilize as well. Next up, we're going to go ahead and take Black Templar and apply this to the Blight Launcher, the grenade in his hand, as well as the knife you can see that is sort of sheathed in um, on his back. So we're going to go ahead and cover those all up, and eventually these will get that nice blue that we tend to see on my Plague Marines, but that won't be till a little bit later near the end. My little Plague Marine is looking great with his trim, the green of his armor, and the black on his weapons complete. And honestly, that is kind of the most tedious part of this. What we have left is basically the details. So we're going to go ahead and take Skeleton Horde, apply that to any of the bone portions on the miniature, which will include the teeth in his belly, his hooves on his feet, and then that spike sticking out of his shoulder, as well as the skulls that are on the other shoulder. Next up, we're going to take Nasdreg Yellow and we're going to apply this to not only the tongue in his mouth, because I want to do something a little bit different with that, but also he's got this like spinal thing sticking out of the back of his uh, backpack. So we're going to put it on that as well as the sheath that the knife goes into. While we wait for the Nasdreg yellow to dry, because I do have some additional plans for that sheath in the back, we're going to go ahead and take Plague Bearer Flesh, which I almost threw onto the floor, thankfully it wasn't open yet, and apply that to all of the tiny little bugs that are crawling all over this particular Plague Marine. So all the little maggots that are in his belly, on his shoulders, and his backpack, they're pretty much everywhere, they're all going to get Plague Bearer Flesh.
Remember how just a moment ago I said I had some extra plans for that sheath on his back? Well, we're gonna take this Gilman flesh and we're gonna put a thin layer of this over top of the yellow tone that we put on there to give it a little bit more of an aged leather look without actually using the snake bite leather because I didn't want it to quite be that brown. I wanted it to look like it had rotted a little bit and had a little bit of a jaundiced effect, which is why we put the plague bear flesh beneath it first. We are now going to move on to probably my favorite part of the process, which is dry brushing skink blue onto all of the weapons. We're going to start by using a small dry brush and just lightly apply this all over all the black portions on the miniature that we'd previously painted. You'll notice here in a second that in order to test to make sure to see if I've got enough paint off of my brush, I use the bottom of the base to test that. It's a really nice way to kind of see how much paint is coming off because occasionally when you're dry brushing miniatures, if you don't remove enough paint, you can get this really big glob of whatever color you're using and it can kind of mess up your effect that you might be going for. So having as little paint as possible on the brush is best because you can always layer up your dry brush rather than going too far. I also switch over at some point to a small base brush, which I've kind of ruined the bristles on already, to do any of the smaller detail work like the chain mail that is beneath the cloak or on the knife itself where there's the smaller portion so that I'm not making a mess. I also do eventually go back and do a little bit of cleanup because obviously you're going to get some blue some places when you're doing a dry brush and I just wanted to make sure that my cloak was completely clean and fresh for the next color that we apply to it which is of course going to be Vulpus Pink because he doesn't have enough red tones, I think, in him. So I wanted to add that. So I'm gonna take a medium shade brush because I want this to kind of go on as smoothly as possible. And we're gonna apply this to both the back portion of the cloak as well as the front portion of the cloak. And of course, don't forget to apply this to the back side of the cloak like I almost did. The final color that we need to apply before we can do our basing or any of our washes is Blood Angel Red, and we're just going to gently dab this, hopefully into the eyes with much success. In between stages, I went ahead and pre-primed his base in Talaron Sand so that I would be ready for the Armageddon Dust, which we are using now to apply our texture to his base. We're going to Put this on pretty thinly, gonna just smooth it around everywhere as much as we can. You don't really need a lot of this paint. It does go on pretty nicely, both thin or thick, depending on how you're wanting to do it. I tend to keep my paint a little bit on the thinner side because then I can do some other things with skulls or gluing additional stuff to the miniature or base without problem. Next up, we're going to apply Agrath's Earthshade to basically the entire miniature using our large shade brush again, with the exception of anything that we dry brushed, because we don't want to darken any of that tone at all. And here is our Plague Marine all finished up. And honestly, I really like this technique as a way to batch paint all my miniatures. I think it's been working really well for me and it's allowed me to accomplish a lot of squads all at once, which is great because I want to have them all painted for the channel as well as for when I finally can go back to my friendly local game store and kick people's butt with a fully painted Death Guard army. You guys better be prepared and I hope you liked them. That was my technique for painting my Death Guard. Hopefully this speed painting technique will help you guys in the future with your own miniatures, because we all know 9th edition is coming and I definitely want to have my boys ready for that. Thank you again for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to do so. Bye guys, thanks for watching.